You follow me so far? So uh, for us, as police officers, it's very tough because um, it, it, it is a no-win situation. Oftentimes, we go to the same house all the time. Same house, domestic violence. We separate the two. Sometime, you know, someone may go to jail. Next time, we may be able to settle it with two people leaving or going, one going somewhere and another person going another place. Sometime, we may be able to take uh, one of the parties to a shelter home, usually a woman, and take her to the shelter home to, to let things cool down. We usually give them um, these little forms. And on these forms, we give them uh, a lot of information. It tells them about the Abuse Prevention Act, which is the state law that we operate under. It, um, it outlines how uh, a restraining order is, uh, is sought. And it also tells them where to go for, um, for a complaint signing. It also gives them a number here for the Women's Crisis 24-hour uh, line, which uh, gives them counseling and emergency shelter and transportation referral and those kinds of things. And I'll leave some of these with you so you can see that. But think about it yourself. You're a woman who's uh, uh, just been uh, victimized by your boyfriend or your, or your husband who you trust. You've been beaten up. Um, your mind's not very clear. You're not sure of what you want to do, what you can do. This is a lot of information to swallow, to take in. Sometimes it takes a couple of days, sometimes a couple of weeks before this information might make sense. And what can happen in that period of time, in that couple of weeks, can be a number of other instances of abuse. There's also, um, there's also a lot of stigma. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, are you going to get to the place that they're, they're fighting or whatever if a, if a girl calls it in and saying she's getting her, getting her, uh, like getting beat up by the parent, by the guy, like how many minutes does it take you guys to get there? Uh, how many minutes? Uh, yeah. It's a priority call, so we get there as soon as possible. Um, cars will go there if they're nearby immediately. Well, okay. Sometimes call three. What if a guy calls in and says that he's getting beat up by his girl? Uh huh. Do you guys still go the same? Fashion? Absolutely, absolutely. And we do have a lot of men that call. And then sometimes it is. It does. It does take too long. Sometimes it does take too long. You're right. Ratio women to men calling. I don't have that but I will tell you for sure is the ratio is higher for women calling. The ratio is higher also for women being victims. Let's say nine to one, that's the last figure. It's men hitting women. And most of the time if a woman does hit a man, it's in response to what she, it's a, it's a self-defense situation where she's being hit, she's trying to protect herself and does what she has to do. I wonder why um, there's restraining orders and all this. Mm -hmm. Even the people who do try and um, get away from their perpetrator or whatever. That their partners are their property. Their partners are their property. You can't leave me because I own you. You can't leave me because you're mine. If you leave me, I will kill you so that nobody else will have you. That's property. And so when you're thought of as property, you can be disposed of. Someone can dispose of you and get more property. And that attitude, that, tra that, that, that state of mind, is what keeps us in this cycle of violence. And you see people thinking that way about the children, too. I'll whoop my kid's ass because he's mine. That's my kid. Forgetting the fact that this child is also a citizen of this, of, this, of this country, a citizen. This little child has a mind and, and body and soul of his own. He's a citizen. He's a little person that's not very big, but still a citizen. He doesn't belong to anybody as property. 
He's a child. But yet we think in terms of ownership. And I'm thinking that that might be the reason why people still get killed. Because they feel that they have to do that. They have to finish something that, that they consider unfinished. Anybody else have some thoughts about that? That's a good, that's a good question. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> why, why is it sometimes so hard for women to get protection from, like, their batteries or whatever? Why? Because sometimes they have to go through a lot. Sometimes they even have to die before they, you know what I'm saying, get even recognized that something's happened to them, even though they mm -hmm. do call the police time and time again. That's, a, that's an, also another good question. Why does it take so much time to get protection, to get that protection going? Yeah, because I know, but, <laughs> but still, it's like, I mean, it's like even after a woman complains, or after a woman complains, or after a woman, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Or a man even, they um, make themselves known and everything, and they try to get protection from that person or whatever. Why is it? Why does they have to go to such an extent sometimes for people to even be able to press charges or anything, or or the person might be getting beat and tell the police and call the police, and then you come, you don't see nothing on her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You don't see no scars, no bruises. You can't really do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So in the meantime, she continue to get beat or continue to get hurt, in even different ways. You know, sometimes she might be getting tortured, locked in the basement or something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can't do nothing because y'all ain't got, or y'all ain't got no certain proof. But yet she's still going through all this abuse. Okay, that's a, that's a good point. Except for one point that um, that, that I probably need to correct. Uh, bruises don't prove anything really, one way or the other. Um, I mean, I've had men in, in domestic violence show me their hickey, say, "Look what she did to me." I said, "Well, that's a hickey." <laughs> no, it ain't. Uh, she tried to choke me. Well, I know the difference between being choked and having a hickey. Okay, I know what the difference is. I grew up too. <laughs> You don't have to have scars and bruises and bumps on your head in order to convince an officer that you have been a victim of domestic violence. Because you don't even have to be hit to be a victim of domestic violence. But that's not always true because when police, when police show up and they see a man in a woman fight and then mm -hmm. they see women with cut and just bleeding all over herself or whatever. And just Somebody's going to jail. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The man won't go to jail because, I mean, the woman's all beat up. I mean, cut, cut, bruises do make a difference. Mm -hmm. Y'all walk up on something, y'all see bruises all over her yeah. arm and stuff, even a kid, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna take action on the other person because y'all see the bruises. It makes it, it makes it a lot easier to determine what happened if you see blood and bumps and bruises. That's evidence that can be seen and it's better for conviction. But we take action in domestic violence in cases where we get there so early in the, in the, in the, in the beef that no one's been hit yet. <laughs> No one has been hit. But the words uttered were, if you leave me, I will choke you out. I will kill you. I will beat your ass. I will do this, I will do that. At that point in time, he has committed a violation of, of the law. He has placed this person in, in the state of mind would believe that he was serious. He approached her. He pointed his finger in her face. He menaced her. All those things you can articulate in a report and take that man to jail. Because if you don't, when you leave, he's going to carry out what he said he was going to do. He's going to say, see, that little chump ass Peckerwood cop just left here and didn't do nothing. So you go on ahead, call again. We're not going to help you. And so, and so that, and that is evidence in, in and of itself. She tells you, this is what he told me. He threatened to kill me. And I feel in danger. Okay, but that is a good point. You don't have to have those bruises to, to have a case. Domestic violence now is a refined law. It used to be pretty sketchy. Even if the threat was made under anger, you still have to do time just for no threat to somebody? Well, if you're, th if you're threatened, let's say your wife tells you, she tells you she's going to cut you. She says, I'm going to wait till you go to bed. I'm going to throw some hot oatmeal on your face. And then I'm going to cut you. I'm going to go get a steak knife. And I'm going to cut you up. Well, wait till you're sleeping. So after the David Letterman show, now I'm going to cut you up. 
<laughs> you get on the phone, you call the police, say, I can't go to sleep, this woman wants to kill me. Would you please do something with her? That's domestic violence. It takes a lot of time because I just sat there. <laughs> no, but for real, I just sat there and watched somebody get beat up and call the police to be crying and stuff on the on the phone. And the people on the other side were like, "Hold on, hold on, we trying to." They really can't understand, but that person can still be getting hit. It take a long time after y'all mm -hmm. listen to them tapes. What, what's the problem? I mean, <laughs> that's a good that's a good point. That's a good no, point. I ain't, I ain't trying a to be funny, minutes. but on me. I know. It, waiting on y'all sometimes. If you're on the floor getting die. getting pounded. A minute is a long time, isn't it? For sure, a minute is a long time. 30 seconds is a long time. That's your life. You playing with me, he beating the crap out of you. You on the line trying to call the police. Exactly. He's up the phone. Now what y'all going to do? Y'all going to sit there and wonder if she's going to call back. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It seems like a long time. <laughs> yeah. And, some, and, and the tracing. <laughs> let's say you never, you never get a chance <laughs> to put. <laughs> let's say you never get a chance to tell your name or, your, or, or where you live. You know, they, they, can, they, can do a, they can do a trace on the phone. It takes a little bit of time. Y'all get that trace in the car and get in there. Home girl probably gone, and he probably gone too. Probably. So and it does happen. It does happen. That, that gave him enough time to do what he had to do and get up out of there. And that's, and that's, and that's why preparation, preparation and education is so important. Because right now, right now, we might be preventing domestic violence right here. See, we might prevent, be preventing that call that takes place. Because, uh, you know, part of it has to be prevention. You, you, oh, excuse me. Sure. Dan, can you frame him for this answer? What advice could you give uh, some of our talent when they get into arguments with their girl, when ladies get into arguments with their fellas, to sort of de-escalate the situation so you won't be called? That's a good question, too, because um, everybody, everybody, knows, everybody knows what their... Um, the threshold is, meaning where, where your buttons are. You know that uh, you'll be all right as long as nobody touches you. Or you'll be all right as long as nobody calls you a certain name. Or you'll be all right as long as you can have some time and distance. Or you can get out of the house. Everybody has buttons. And everybody needs to be aware of what those buttons are, you know, and how, and, 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 and how what it takes to get there. And, and we all have an idea of where, where our temper is. And if we know what's at stake, meaning being arrested or losing your relationship or having to deal with, uh, with the courts, if you know what's at stake, uh, you can start thinking about what that threshold is for you where you, get, where you get angry, where you get out of control. And certainly if you've been drinking, that threshold is somewhere in here. And then it gets even worse. Is that about answer? Yes, sir, that answered it. And look at the camera and answer this question. Why is a domestic violence call the most difficult for a street cop? Domestic violence uh, call, like I said before, is, a, is the most dangerous call you can go on uh, because there's so many unknowns about the call. As you're going up to the house, there may have been shots fired inside that you don't hear when you, when you arrive. You don't know if there's someone other in the, uh, otherwise in the house that you don't account for. Uh, there's always dogs, uh, and you know that there was some violence, but you don't know what the extent of violence was. Usually you go to a domestic violence call with one other officer, uh, at least, and sometimes more officers depending on what had been reported. A domestic violence call nationwide is a call that um, has accounted for many, many officer deaths and shootings. And uh, this city is no different from any other city. Um, our families are no more violent uh, or less violent than they are in any other cities. When domestic violence hits, when, uh, when people are fighting in a house, emotions are as high as they can be. Weapons all around, um, and usually the officers are, uh, are quickly the object of the violence. And that's why we're so concerned uh, when, these, when these cases come up. Well, if we witness domestic violence, what can we do as uh, civilians and passerby so that we won't, while they're waiting for you guys to come, so we won't be hurt? I mean, what, so a lot of us witness domestic violence in our community and in our lives. What can we do about it? First thing we deal with is stigma. 
you know, we don't want to get involved because it's somebody else's business. We don't want to snitch on somebody else or be the one that the police come to when the violence call comes out. We don't want to be singled out as the busybody who's paying attention to somebody else's business. But at the same time, there's nobody that wants it to happen to them. Nobody wants to be beat up. And anybody who wants, to, anybody who's beat up would hope that somebody else would come and help them. And the stigma that's attached to not, to not reporting is, uh, is one that we have to get over as a community. And it happens in all neighborhoods, not just this neighborhood, all kinds of neighborhoods. You know, little quiet neighborhoods in southeast and southwest, wherever, you know, people look out the window and say, oh, the Morgans are fighting again. Close the window. Turn up the TV. They do it all the time. I don't want to hear it. Turn up the TV. Close the door. Bring kids, come on in. They're fighting. There's nothing we can do. But then that one day may be the day that Mrs. Morgan, you know, gets stabbed in the heart. And the children don't have a mother. So How we... Yes, it was. It was a, a, a little away from a domestic violence call, but it was all generated by a domestic violence call in which a, a, a kid was, a small child was, was shot. Um, and for every officer, it rings true because we've all been to those calls. Every one of us has been to those calls. Uh, involving guns, involving serious violence, um, and then chasing someone around a building. We've all done that. It's, it, it all has those familiar rings of danger that, uh, that make his death um, us. And we think, you know, there before the grace of God go I. It could have been my call. I could have been running around the back of the building chasing that guy down, and he could have shot me, and I'd be dead, and my kids would be going to my funeral. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing we think about all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. And again, you don't want to end your life trying to help somebody else because you got priorities, you got things you want to mm -hmm. do too. And I mean, you might not even know the person that's across the street fighting or upstairs fighting or whatever. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to risk your life to help somebody else that you don't even know? You know what I'm saying? Maybe if it was mm -hmm. your sister or your, you know, or whoever, then you'd be down to, you know, handle, stay, handle that, things. But I mean... That's right. You can't, directly, you can't directly intervene. This is a good question because... You want to do something to help, but you can't directly intervene. You can't directly go up there and break up the fight. You can't do what the police have to do because you don't have the equipment. So what you do? So what you do is you pick up the phone. You act as a witness. You act as eyes. You say, I mean, you don't have to wait until some crime has, has, has occurred. You can, you can tell when someone is fighting. You can hear it. I know, but you just, then you could be putting yourself in the same amount of danger because then... Witnesses get put in danger, too. Yeah, you call the police on you call the police on for the most part, in domestic violence, where's the violence directed? They're like, hell no, you call At the police each other. on me. Uh -huh. yeah, it's but another person, and it's, and it's more you know, to you. Yeah. you, you can call well, most of the time, they tell you, they say, your business, just say yourself. People don't like the police yourself. No. That's, the That's right. But they don't like the police. They know you didn't call the police on them. Ain't nobody telling them to call the cops. I mean, you guys call the people that are fighting. No, we don't. They don't know. Well, you just well, come to help. You just, you yeah. just came outside and was like, hey, let me help you. Oh, what? It was like, this ain't your business. You going to help and let you know the police show. Police just didn't get there. They didn't have no feeling y'all out there fighting. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Anytime you put somebody else's life, and like, you putting like prison, you either putting prison or life out in the streets, you putting somebody else's life in prison, like, you put in, like, prison, you either put in prison or life out in the streets, if you're about to put them in prison, a witness about to put them in prison, you better believe that that person is in danger too, because they don't want to go to prison. And witness protection? No, it would be nothing else. No. <laughs> that's, that's something that happens like all too often. And for you to get put in jail like that, for a witness, for anyone uh, let, let me let me put Let me free phrase this a little bit now. I left this picture up here for a reason. Okay? So, some little guy was kind enough to draw this picture for me, and, and I think it's very appropriate for what we're talking about. This person is representing the person who is the aggressor in a family violence situation. This person, just think about this person being the aggressor, okay? Big mouth, big head, and he's gonna tell everybody whose fault it is that he's in, he's in the situation he's in, including you as a witness. 
You're the witness or you're the person that called. You're the bitch that caused him all kind of trouble. You know, you know you're the you police know. that come over here and drag me out of my house and, and, and ruin my life and take me to jail because all I was doing was getting things right with my wife. Well, sure, she's on the floor bleeding and everything, but it's her fault because she, you know, she said that to me. Or she was disrespecting me. She, you know, my food is cold on the table. And so I had to thump her to make her realize that it's her fault, not mine. But you you see. And so this big head, this big head as he's going out the door, this big head right here, is blaming everybody, including you, you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and the woman he beat up, and the police officer, and the judge who's going to sentence him, and the person who sold him the bottle of, a bottle of booze that got him drunk in the first place. He's blaming everybody but his own dumb self. And that is, that is, in a nutshell, what happens in domestic violence, especially chronic, I should say chronic domestic violence cases where people who in their, in their minds, in their minds believe that what they do is the proper thing. Okay? You know? <laughs> that, that's a good excuse. That's a, I, I, you know, I'm really, I'm, I don't feel that that's right. Even though sometimes if you get intoxicated, man, you don't blame it on that. Because you was crazy the beginning before you even started that. <laughs> that's right. You already knew what you was going to do. That just brought it on out of you. And you just went ahead. And it, just, it just became stronger. But you already had that. Don't blame it on the <laughs> wig. Don't blame that on the wig. <laughs> All right. This, this, is, this, is a good point. this is a good point to go back. This is a good point to go back. This big head here used to be this little head here, OK? This little fat baby here, when he was growing up, saw a lot of domestic violence in his home, a lot of screaming and howling. Remember what I said earlier about people feeling the blame for what's going on when your parents are fighting? This little child feels the blame. And as he grows up and domestic violence continues, that child feels more blame and more responsible for what's taking place. That creates a lot of anger in this child here. And even though he's just a simple, small, little, ordinary child, up here, we create the seed of domestic violence of the future. That's why they talk about domestic violence being a cycle, OK? It comes back as an adult and as a child. And so that person, as an, as an adult, that beats his wife and blames everybody else, is acting out, in, as a child, what happened to him. Blame, right here. This child felt that he was to blame for everything. And maybe his parents reinforced that in the same way this cycle happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. For one, I mean, when she get beat, he he been to blame her. He blamed her a long time ago. Yeah. Because if he didn't blame her, she wouldn't have got hit. She wouldn't be down there. But then again, you was like, well, the witnesses. I mean, even though it's cool to just to you know stop stuff like that. When you say we're well, old, oh, they're fighting again. They close little window. Yeah. Most of the time, when oh boy, no, okay. You first you say something, no, don't hit her, man, don't hit her, man. You shut up, don't hit her, man, don't hit her, man. You shut up. After he to beat her, he ready to hit you. Oh, you supposed to be my boy, man, what's all that? Then y'all get into it. Now, that's going to cause even more problems because that man already, what you say, he off the chronic? Mm -hmm. He already intoxicated, like you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, he, uh, no, he already intoxicated. So, number one, he's not going to sit there thinking, oh, well, even though this person, this person, this person, and that person just did it. They weren't trying to help the situation. Oh, they all going to use me. They trying to put me there. That's what's going to trigger him to hurt somebody, to kill somebody, which is going to be everybody's fault for jumping in when you had no business getting in there. Exactly. That was her. She did that. Hey, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because <laughs> because this 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 big this big head over here. No, I would. I would. He got, here's, in, his, here's his I brain. All right, here's the brain of this big head over here. There's something wrong with this person's brain, right? There's something wrong with this person's brain because he's blaming everybody for his own business. Now, after a person goes through the court system 
and has to go to domestic violence classes, has to go to anger management, this person gets a different perspective on what his responsibilities are as a spouse. And he'll realize that it's his frame of mind that creates the domestic violence, not the situation. Nobody deserves to get the, 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 the stuff beat out of them. Nobody deserves that. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you, you know, if you didn't, you, you know, cook the, cook the roast beef right, if you, you know, if, if the beer is warm. It doesn't matter what you did. You don't deserve to get beat up by your spouse. But you don't think about that after you have. That's right. That's right. Side is usually taken. So you get there, and you like, and you like, oh, question. You know what I'm saying? No question. It's him. It could have been a woman. He could have been trying to get away. She snatched him up, and he just, you know what I'm saying? Like, let go. Soccer. So if he had put like, she started. If she made that man hit her, I don't care how old boy hit her. He hit her for not hard enough to knock her down, regardless if she started. Oh boy, hey, if she trying to get away. Oh boy, going to jail because. After doing this for 24 years, I, I come in. I come in with my heart, you know, because I, I hear what people are saying, saying to me, but I also know I've been there so many times. I have experience from my childhood, I have experience from, from this work, and I have my training all to fall back on. So when some big, big old guy tells me, well, she was hitting on me and, 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 and punching me all up in my face and everything, and, and you know, here she is, she's about this tall over here, she ain't big enough to, you know, to do nothing. And I start, start thinking, well, what's he trying to tell me? What's he trying to tell me? What's he trying to tell me? So I, usually, usually I, I can get a pretty good sense of what's going on by talking to the two different people. Now sometimes I know that there's a lot of uh, exaggeration and there's a lot of um, uh, you know, lying sometimes and, and, and I have to look past that. I have to see, well, what kind of situation am I, am I looking at? Am I looking at a chronic situation, something where domestic violence is a daily thing? Am I looking at something that might be fresh, you know? Is this something that he, you know, he just came home to and lost his temper? Is this something that she did to, de to defend herself? I have to weigh all those things, and I do have to look at it real hard because domestic violence, I think, is one of the most um, difficult. Well, what, I, what I'm saying is that I think it's a it's a it's a very uh, it's a call that requires a lot of thinking. Now, some officers, when they don't have all the experience, they come in and go, hmm. I'm pretty uncomfortable in this call. These people are yelling and hollering, and she got some bruises, he got some bruises. Psh, I'll just take them both, boom, psh, both in the car, shut up, get in there, boom, psh, off to jail, load them up, and then get back, get back to your coffee and donut. I had to throw that in there. Major damage to somebody uh -huh. and get out the same night. Now, Portland good for that because I ain't going to lie. I didn't oh, oh, Tasha, it. Tasha, let me answer that. The police yeah, have nothing to do with the jails. Out. The jails are ran by Multnomah County Sheriffs. Once the, the city police take them to jail, am I right, David, on this? Because I asked that same question. Once the police take them to jail. Finish the, answering the question, though. But she Hold on to that one. But you asked me. But you didn't say that. <laughs> Okay, there's just one, one thing I want to add. One thing I want to add to that is with domestic violence, what, is it, what does it look like in the law? It's called assault in the fourth degree. Okay, you and I are fighting. I don't like what you told me. I slapped you in the face. Well, you got a big old red cheek. Okay, maybe I slapped you once or twice. Okay, when the officer comes to make the charges, the charge is domestic violence, assault in the fourth degree. And what is assault in the fourth degree? A misdemeanor. A misdemeanor is the, the lower grade of crime. A felony is the higher grade of crime. Okay, but let's say if I let's say I I I, uh, I not only slapped her in the face, but then I went to the kitchen drawer and I pulled out a, a knife and I chased her through the house. Okay, and I said I'll try to kill you. Then it goes then it elevates to the felony level, which means the bail goes up, and also. Um, the concern that the jail has and the, and the liability the jail has 
in, in holding that person in custody until they pay full bail or in some cases where, where we think um, the domestic violence has been, has been particularly aggravated, we try to up that bail. We try to get the jail to up the bail. The bail for domestic violence is, is only $1,500. Only? Okay? 10% of that, 10% of that is $150. So this fool in jail is going to process out in four hours. Okay, whether he has whether he has $150 or not. Now, sometimes if he doesn't have $150, he won't be recogged because it's domestic violence on the custody. Okay, we put that on the custody. Domestic violence assault four means the jail's got to hold on to him. Next morning, he'll yeah. see the judge, and he'll probably get out. Hopefully, by then. That young woman is able to get out of the house. She ain't gonna go nowhere. And, that's, and, that's, and that brings me to the next part. That brings me to the next part. Why, why is it so difficult? That's her spot. She ain't gonna get into that Huh? You, you want me to draw that again? That's a good, that's a good question. That's very true. That's very true. There are a lot of women right now that have done time for killing their boyfriends. There's a lot of young women that are in jail right now, in prison right now, because they kill their attacker. Kill their attacker. That's crazy. Okay? He and, could have and killed it, her, but instead of her, he, I mean, he could have killed her all that time he would beat on her. He gets, he goes to jail. He gets out the next morning. That one time she flips and be like, Dwayne, can you hit me up for it? She stabbed, but shoot that, shoot that, she flipped. But so much, think about how many, how many times old boy that flipped on her. When she finally turned back and flipped on him, y'all gonna put her in jail? That's right. That's crazy. That's crazy because, you know, evidently he had to beat her and beat her. <laughs>